is Texas State Senator Roland Gutierrez, who represents the Uvalde area. Senator, thanks uh, for, for being with us this morning. How, how have you been processing what happened a year ago, a year later? Well, thank you, Jose. It's been obviously very hard. Uh, it's very sad, everything that has transpired over this year. Uh, since you and I met on the, the day after the 24th, not a whole lot has changed. There's not a whole lot of answers. There's very little transparency. There's no accountability. No one has really been fired. Just a recent uh, Washington Post story came out today and uh, indicating that the cop that they, the ranger they said was going to be fired has not been fired. And so we really are very frustrated. We're frustrated that there seems to be no real legislation. The bill that Guad mentioned went nowhere. I filed three different amendments onto the Senate floor that were shut down by the lieutenant governor for procedural reasons. It is all hard to process. You try to find just the reality in it, and it just doesn't, none of this makes any sense. And it doesn't make any sense that where we are in Texas politically on this issue when most people want change. Yeah. You know, I, I think a lot about Uvalde. I think a lot about that year. I think a lot about on the 25th when, when we met just outside Rob Elementary and we were talking about how important it was for there be support for the families of those 19 children, of those two teachers, and then, of course, the husband of one of the teachers who died as well. Has there been support for these families? Does support continue to come in for them? So there was certainly support from the general public as they established their GoFundMe accounts. There was a, a large bit of money that was collected by the city, which we ensured got to the families, and that was distributed in November, some six months later. We're still struggling with the Victims' Compensation Fund, which, you, as you are aware, those are federal funds, along with some state matching grants. Um, it turns out that in Uvalde, only $93,000 was distributed to families over 390 applicants. That's an average of $230. You had families that just had to make decisions that they wouldn't have wanted to make, like going back to work. They needed time to heal, time to cope, time to do the things that needed to be done. We have a system in place in Texas that when these tragedies happen, we're supposed to be able to care for people. We're supposed to have some kind of security blanket in place. And that's why Victims of Compensation is created by the federal government. But unfortunately, the Attorney General's office did not do a very good job in that capacity. On a spiritual note, we're all there for them. I'm going to be there later on today. They're lovely people, and uh, I love yeah. them. They are yeah. really, they're really yeah, respected. And, you know, just later on in, in this hour, we're going to be speaking uh, to the mother of Lexi, uh, Lexi Rubio, who, who, who was one of the 19 children. And, uh, you know, one of the things, Senator, is that where, you know, you're talking about accountability not existing. I, I just keep thinking of... 77 minutes. I keep thinking about 376 at one time. Law enforcement officers were inside Rob Elementary for 77 minutes. You know, the, the teacher who called her husband and saying, I'm, I'm bleeding to death. Little kids that kept calling 911 saying, I'm in 112, come and get us. What does accountability, I mean, where do we, when do we start the first step of accountability, Senator. There, there hasn't been any, Jose. This governor hasn't demanded any. The WAPO story last night, this morning, suggested that they knew that the children were in there within nine minutes uh, because some teacher told them, another teacher in another classroom. Um, at minute 35 or 38, the first call came in from children inside the classroom. Um, it's astounding to me that this governor doesn't fire the director of public safety, who, as you know, sought to point the finger at every other agency rather than to look at himself and look at his own agency that had the most number of cops who handle all rural situations generally uh, that are of this level of violence. Uh, yeah. There was extreme failure at every level, but, you know, we are living in a strange place in Texas where accountability really doesn't exist. And as much as I've tried and others have tried, 
we're just living in a space where Republicans control the House, the Senate, and every position of power in this state, and they don't want to see the truth, they don't want to acknowledge the truth, and they don't want the public to know the truth. The fact is, we're living not in the Texas miracle that Abbott says, but in the Texas nightmare. Senator, I, you know, a lot of the, as I think back a lot, you know, the, the conversations, the private conversations that uh, will always remain private between you and me on the 25th, uh, on the 26th, but, but some of the things that, you know, we have yet to hear about was what, what transpired in those 77 minutes in that, in those two classrooms and, and what are some of the things that you, Senator, uh, will always keep etched upon your soul and as a burden on your heart from what you learned from those parents, from the people who shared stuff with you? What are some of the things that, as a father and as a human being, that remain etched in your soul and still carrying that weight on your heart? Well, as you know, Jose, I, I told you something that, uh, that I was told by law enforcement at that time. It took me 60 days. I sued the government to try to get information and finally signed a non-disclosure agreement. And I've said this many times, I don't get the thoughts out of the images out of my head anymore. I've seen uh, children's faces shot off. I saw one child that was decapitated. Um, I've seen these children riddled with bullets. What I told you that day and, and what I'll tell you now, uh, what I will divulge now is that these children were stacked in piles. And I thought that that was something that the killer had done. But indeed, there was two piles in one room, uh, another pile in another. The teacher shielding their children as best they could, uh, all of them shot dead. Few that were alive were in those, in and around those stacks. And they were piled not because the killer had done this. They were piled together because, sadly, this is what we train children to do when there's a mass shooting situation. We train them to turn the lights off and lock the doors and close the, the curtains or the blinds and to huddle together. And uh, we saw a little girl the other day on another on another documentary, and she showed how that shooter just swept his gun across a stack of children, uh, shooting them all dead. The horror that I've seen uh, is worse than any horror movie you could ever imagine. It is worse than anything that I think that anybody could ever imagine. I uh, don't take, I wake, I go to bed to those images and I wake up to them. And they'll probably follow me for the rest of my life. This moment uh, changed my life forever. And I'll be talking about this forever. I'll be advocating as much as I can, as long as I can. Yeah. The things that, uh, you know, just to think about, you know, elementary school children just about to wrap up their year, right? And uh, and this reality. Uh, Senator, I, I thank you. I uh, really appreciate your uh, honesty and... Uh, you know, the things that we've talked about that we can say and that you're saying, I uh, very much want you to know that it's important for people to hear. And the things that we can't share, I want you to know, uh, have made an impact on my life. And uh, I just, you know, anyway, State Senator Roland Gutierrez, I thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.